Well, I'm just, I'm just gonna ask you again, girl. Go, go ahead, man. You, you, you gotta tell us, man. You gotta tell us, cause you, you, it was getting good. It did, it cut off on us. But what? So, okay. How does Rocky Pennington defeat Amanda Nunes? It, it was. <laughs> please, please explain that for me. God um, bless you. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, Valentina's team has definitely had the best plan to try and defeat uh, Amanda. Unfortunately, they were at a slight disadvantage. Uh, and, you know, shorter and leaves reach. So, now that you have Raquel in there who doesn't have that size disadvantage against Amanda, then it's me. I think she just try to follow that same plan. Using a lot of leg kick, leg kicks, and uh, trying to take that away from Amanda because she she's mobile. She uses a lot of her footwork. Um, you know, she's very good. Her boxing is on point, so she uses her legs. You know, that's that's what your your body is support on. So I would go after that lead leg, and I would try to do counter punching like a man, like uh, Valentina did. Now, of course, that requires a lot of skill and training, but um, I think you know. Um, Raquel says that, you know, she's underestimated a lot of the time, so maybe she can show those skills this time around. And, you know, she's going to have to be agile. She's going to have to try and avoid those power punches from Amanda. And, you know, the final thought that I had on that was to clinch with Amanda. Since her gas tank is so suspect, you know, she she lasted the five rounds because Valentina didn't push her. And because she wasn't chasing after Valentina like she did in the first fight, um, so, depending on how Amanda goes after Raquel, um, if she's trying to take her time, then I would definitely clinch with her, go for those knees to the body, and really try to, you know, um, use that gas tank. So, I think that she would be uh, more stationary, and she would probably be taken down a lot more easy, and we're just going off of the first fight with Valentina. And that says a lot. I mean, she's been the only person to take her to the system twice, you know? So she's smart when she's in there, uh, Valentina is. So I, I think that that's what people have to look at and try to tailor that to their own fighting style, but using that plan that was already laid out, you know? So Because I think if, if Valentina didn't have that size disadvantage coach, I think that she would have won that fight. And, and for me, I think she won that fight. But she didn't want it. She didn't want it decisively. Like she didn't go in there and took the belt from Amanda. Um, and, and Raquel wanted to talk a lot of BS about that. How she wasn't impressed, you know, with that fight. And I'm thinking, girl, you're a fighter. You should be seeing all the technical aspects of it and, and the master plan behind this and the reason why they went about it this way. Um, so yeah. that's my input on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I made a couple of videos on what would happen if Valentina would have actually went with the game plan like oh well you need to go in and, and rush Amanda and get in close well you know she would have been she would have been carried out you know out of that octagon on the stretcher and um, uh-huh. and Amanda Nunez didn't want to get submitted because uh, you know yeah. seeing the first fight they really didn't know that Valentina her submission game they didn't think it was it was really that good but uh, you know she fought Rocky Pennington I mean I'm sorry she fought a, a, a Julian Pena and yeah. no wait a minute no the first fight Okay, um, they didn't know that actually Valentina had a submission game because she hadn't fought Juliana Pena right right then, and so. Um, but the second fight, see, this is now she she's fought Juliana Pena, and you know so Amanda didn't want to get submitted, and you can even tell by some of the stances that she chose to take, you know, to to try to counter Valentina from even trying to get in and get the leg trips. Amanda avoided all of that because you know she didn't want to be submitted. And, you know, Valentina definitely didn't want to get KO'd because Amanda Nunes, I don't care what anybody tell you, if Amanda Nunes hits you flush enough time, she, she's going to KO you. I don't care who you are, okay? Yeah. Um, she's going to KO you. So, you know, it was kind of like a double-edged sword. So they both had to pull into the, the, the master skill tank. And Valentina, I think she had to use her skill sets a little bit more to actually avoid getting knocked out. And uh, uh-huh. the judges, to me, they don't, they don't score backwards aggression, you know, and I've noticed that. Like, you can you can be an outfighter in MMA, and the judges, they just don't like it. You know, they don't like it, and they're not going to score you as high as, as high as you need to be scored. Okay, right. when when they are, um, when you're an outfighter. You know, when you're, the, like, you know, we take example of the fight with Shayna Dobson. 
I felt like Shayna Dobson outpointed Lauren Mueller. I thought she outpointed. I thought she landed more effective strikes. I thought she did more in the fight to win, but Lauren Mueller got the win because Lauren Mueller was constantly pressing forward. So, I mean, you kind of have, you know, the best of it. Yeah, you can see a great fighter, and you can see him, you know, hey, this is what a good outfighter can do. But that the outfighter most of the time in a championship fight, they're not going to get the decision. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. So. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to that fight. That's for sure. With Raquel and, and Amanda, you know. So, you know, this is going to be her time because Raquel talked a lot of BS. Like I said in that interview after they fought after Valentina and Amanda fought, I was like, okay, well, this is your opportunity. You know, you're going to show us how you're going to go in there and take the belt away from Amanda. So, um, you know, we shall see. We shall see what happens. We going to so, see. I'm mean, definitely interested, yes. Okay. Let me ask you this. What do you think? Let's talk. Let's, 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 let's change divisions. All right. So, Megan Anderson and Holly Holm. First of all, who are you picking to win that fight? And what does each woman have to do to win? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, I think I'm going to go with uh, probably Holly Holm. Uh, okay. So, this is a tough one because uh, I've only seen a couple of Megan fights. And she hasn't been in the octagon for what close to a year now. So yeah, since 2016. He hasn't been in injury, you know. So there you go. He's been longer than that. Um, it's not like she was injured. So she's been training to the fullest, you know. Um, it. I think um, Megan Megan's only shot at winning is probably taking Holly home that and submitting her in one way or another because when you see Holly on the ground it's just, it's just like a fifth out of water you know what I mean she just doesn't have to turn very well on her things and um, you know she's just not there she's just not there now the hard part is going to be taking her down you're going to have to be extremely technical to do that I mean Valentina easily did it um, you know but she's got that skill you know but nobody else except for Misha Tate with the, you know the first second time that she took her down look at what happened yeah. so I, I think for Megan it's going to be that you know uh, probably can take a punt look at what she took from Cyborg <laughs> yeah you man. know that I was talking so, to her so you know I think that's going to be Megan's uh, shot is to do that you know um, I see Holly winning that fight um it, it's gonna be a fight because that she's a big girl megan is a big girl as well you know so uh but um she she looked wild and in a couple of fights that i saw her in i think even when she won the the, the belt um you know she, she looked she looked wild you know so and with holly home's footwork and the way she moved now if holly can please just stop giving hints that she's going to punch uh. she'll be so much better <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, it's coming. Yep, a combination's coming. And uh, she starts her combinations from too far away. You know, and you know that Megan is going to have a reach advantage over her. So she's not going to be able to do that. Like, she needs to work on that. I mean, if, if, if you're going to give the hint that you're going to punch and then you're going to start punching from far away, that's going to give Megan the chance to counter punch her. To counter punch her. And, you know, she, she could win a point. Well, you know, you never know. And I think what, it's going to be, it's not a main event, so it's going to be, what, three rounds, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I see Holly probably, you know, winning by decision. You know, she's going to point her mentally, you know, she's going to try to get out of the way. Um, if she sees that Megan comes at her, like, blitzing at her, I think she's, I think that she's going to work, which is big to kind of stop that momentum. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think everybody knows the leg kick is coming, so most people are, you know, are prepared for that. Um, so I don't see her winning by that. I think she's probably going to win by a unanimous decision, you know, so. Megan is a head kick from that. being knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> Megan is going to, Megan don't move. Megan don't move that jug head of hers. She don't like to move it. She keep that thing stationary, and she gonna be a sitting duck for Holly Holm. I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm telling you, she gonna be a sitting duck. Now, Holly, 